I was in the Air Corps, the Army Air Corps at the time. I went in in 43, I was 18. I was sent down to Nagasaki. Three weeks after the A-bomb was dropped, I was in there. The fellows you see around here have been here with us pretty much since the beginning. So they have old guys with no, nothing better to do, so they spend their time in the shop. It keeps our hands busy in our minds. These cars making their way all over the world. Mexico, India, Africa, and uh, even Iraq, where they were given to our troops, and our troops would pass them out. Every time we build one of these little cars, I think that I wish I could be there to hand it to one of those kids and get the look on their face. Well, I think there are very few older people who don't have the feeling that uh, they've had something in life, a lot in life, and if there's something they can give back, uh, so be it. And we'll be making cars uh, until we pass on to another world, I guess. It's a response to uh, uh, innate desire to do something for somebody. And what What's better than doing the freaking kids? We're tied in with Slayton's bunch here. We're trying to pinch the head of this thing and uh, get around the head of it. Um, the prevailing winds are pushing it off to the east here, off the mountain, and uh, we're just trying to get around it. Basically, it's been one long fire just moving through. Um, today, we're worried about some winds, you know, picking up in the hot, dry day again with a lot of active fire, um, a, a large perimeter, perimeter of fire moving out of control. Firefighters are basically going to homes or going from house to house, staging in there, trying to stop the fire as it comes to the houses. We're just saying a prayer. Um, one of our friends has already lost their home. It's just very scary. It's very devastating. Uh, Julie said it looked like a war zone up there. They call, uh, 5 we have the road, we clean it up with the dozers, and uh, if we go ahead and, uh, and burn it, put the fire on our ground instead of having it up on the steeps. We're prepping with the saws, uh, removing any of the ladder fuels and any uh, dead and down material that might pose a problem once we uh, light this thing. Nobody knows. Anything could happen up there right now, depending on which way the wind goes. We're starting to bring in a lot of resources from around the country to start helping out. So hopefully we can get enough resources in, hopefully the weather cooperates with us, and we can get a chance to start getting a knock on this fire. How do you get from here to there? Rely on the fastest and best conversion crew in the country, the 20 men who work at the Pepsi Center. It's a little playpen of chaos. And I entered that playpen to see how it's done. We had four hours one night last week. As soon as the avalanche game finished, the crew moved around like a bunch of very organized ants. Fast pace. Time is of the essence. So we just go right in there. First, we don't melt the ice, just cover it with a quilt of fiberglass subflooring. We're just filling the whole thing. It's like a big puzzle, and every piece has to fit perfectly. Tight as a drum. About an hour later, we finish that puzzle down to the very last inch. The Pepsi Center crew does this on average 120 times a season. Hockey to basketball, basketball to hockey. See, so here's the gauge. Now the hard part, removing the 300-pound plexiglass partition that protect you from the hockey player. Then it's another back-breaking job, setting up the basketball bleachers and putting in all the portable seats. Next, we mark the floor so that we don't get a crooked basketball court. The hardwood is finally brought out in slabs and that goes down. We're now about two hours into the project. We have about uh, one good long strip of the Nuggets floor down and we've still got another two hours left. These guys are on call for about four hours a night. They started about 10.30. They'll be finished about 2.30. 
It is orderly chaos, everyone now working in sync to get the job done. The time, 12.40, another hour and a half to go. Okay, Out come the baskets. League rules mandate that the net be changed after every four games. <laughs> and of course, the plexiglass needs to be spotless. Then up they go, ready for that six foot nine forward to slam it home. One of the last things to be put in are the chairs for the Nuggets players. And you know what? If Van Exel doesn't show up, I'm trading places with him. That chance, but this was really an eye opener. What goes on behind the scenes when all the fans go home? That's why we keep doing it, and we carry on the legacy of these men that, that died just doing that. You know, they got up for work that morning. They left their families, and they did the same thing. They every day, their careers, you know, that day it cost them, but that's what we're willing to do. I was there that day, and I, I know so many people on this wall, personally, I lost two brothers, Tommy and Timmy, on the 11th, and uh, we're here to honor them, uh, see the name put up on the memorial. They were just normal guys who did uh, what they loved doing. Uh, they were little boys at heart, and if we had a chance to ask them all if they'd change anything or not get on the truck that morning, they'd all get on the truck. They're immortal now. The names are on the wall, and they'll never be forgotten. They remembered for, for he being heroes, you know, and uh, I'm grateful for that. Although they've lost one member of the family, they've, they've inherited a lot more members because now everyone is, is one big family and we're here together and we always will be. That's why we get on the red truck, we pull up our boots, and we go to work. When the things you plan need a helping hand, I will understand always. All of us have dreams and hopes. Hers was to be a great entertainer and to be able to perform on the level plan field. What'll be my way? Lena Horn had to work two, three times harder to overcome the obstacles that stood in front of her. You're looking the wrong way, honey. That's where the white folks live. She's a real role model for me that I know who I am and I am what I am and I don't have to prove to anybody that I'm not black enough or too black or anything like that. I'm just me. And that's what Lena Horne is to me. She's just her. I knew there was a new generation, Negro and white growing in the South, unafraid, unintimidated by bigotry and race superstition. So once again, it's people overcoming those obstacles to continue on with their lives and do great things. Um, and all people really want is a chance. And to caress my lyrics softly before I let them go. And people came in crowds to listen and stayed to hear more. Dreams and determination and will overcome all prejudice and all things that get in the way that just don't matter in life. It's all about what you want out of life, and you'll get it if you try hard enough. I see this you know, as, as kind of a personal test. Man against the elements, as it were. I have cerebral palsy. I'm uh, totally blind. And it's on the right side. This is perhaps the biggest thing I've ever done. This is like my first time back then. I'm very proud of these guys. They've been training for a long time. I'll be you know, doing it basically by feel. This walking stick will kind of act as a third leg. If the ground changes in any way, I know that I'm probably getting off the trail. You know, basically, step by step, Handicapped people can do 
anything they can do. We, we as disabled people are prepared to do whatever it takes. If I can climb two mountains and plus two more this August, anything can happen. I'm doing this, you know, to you know, show that disabled people can be independent. Gary, there's a railing on your left side. I'm also kind of doing this for myself, you know, to prove that I can do something. There are places I remember all my life, though some have changed. His message was and is all you need is love. It's peace and love. His art was like a visual diary for him. He didn't really make up things. He, he drew what he knew. He drew his life. Lovers and friends, I still can recall. John uh, had a rough exterior, thought he was kind of a tough guy, but inside was a very scared person that didn't know how to cry. A humanitarian, uh, someone working for peace, someone that became very in tune with his own self and with his family. And I think at the end of his life, he would say that he was um, a family man and an artist always looking for a way to express himself. Though I know I'll never lose affection for people and things that went before. It's all about peace. Stop and think about them. I loved all the Beatles, but John always struck the chord first with me. I, he was my favorite Beatle, you know, early on. So there's that tinge of sadness, the thinking back of where I was when I heard that he died. He was giving a part of his life onto that piece of paper. It just, it makes me comfortable, really. It just makes me very comfortable to see that, uh, that uh, he gave himself that way and that I can appreciate it. It's still alive, it's still very vibrant. It's still with us. Whether it's in sports or in the community, learning how to work together to depend on one another for survival. And with the bike, it's to beat everybody. <laughs> And that's why I like to reach out and speak to the kids and let them know that there are wonderful opportunities and just wonderful things out there. But they have to take charge and to listen and to be all they can, believing in themselves. I learned that you should not give up and you should work hard, be patient, be motivated to do it. There's a difference between you can't and you won't. And I wanted to reach out and let them know that potential is a gift and not to waste it. And that the only way to bring that out is courage. Excited, but that I'm nervous. I'm excited. So, so hopefully I can channel, uh, not say hopefully, I will channel it all into the adrenaline rush where we get on that track and race the other nations. <laughs> I will always remember that, uh, how amazing she is that everybody can do anything. Don't use the word can't. Be all you can be. Despite what other people tell you, be all you can be. And keep smiling. And even if it hurts, wipe the tears on because one can never creep if one has the impulse to soar. And that's right from Helen Keller, and it's the truth. So be all you can be.